Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Today we're going to talk about the Israeli elections, what happened, and what the world can expect next. But before we get started, I want to remind our viewers to text the word TRUTH, TRUTH, to 88202. You will be automatically signed up for future mailings, our shows, our articles, and you'll never miss an exciting episode, and it's always free. So, what happened this week in Israel? Well, a few days ago, as the world knows, Israel went to the polls, and the election results are basically out. 99.9% .9 are decided, and here's what Israel has come up with. But before I start, let me give you a little background. Israel does not elect its parliament or Knesset. Israel does not elect its leader, its prime minister, nor its cabinet. In Israel, it's a parliamentary system. So Israel, what do they do? Well, they vote for the parties. And the parties turn around and, in turn, select their leaders who become the leaders of the country. Well, that's what happened this week. And here's what the uh, basic outcome is. Whoever gets 50% plus one vote to control seats in the Knesset, there's 120 seats, you need 50% plus one, which is a total of 61. They become the leader of the government. They name the prime minister. And for the next four years, unless the government coalition falls, they are the leader of the country. So here are the results from a few days ago. The right center party, which is Likud, received 31 Knesset seats. The left center party, in English called blue and white, received 33 seats. Now remember, to gain control of the government, you need 61 seats in the 120 seat Knesset or Israeli parliament. Obviously, no one is even remotely close to that number. So now the coalition building starts. The Israeli prime minister for the last zillion years, Likud party leader Benjamin Netanyahu, has already reached out to his centrist blue and white opponent, which is former IDF commanding general Benny Gantz, and said, I want to form a broad unity government. And Gantz has already answered him, no deal. So, here's the totals. Blue and white got 33, they're in the lead. Likud, the present leader of Israel, got 31, they're in second. There are various conservative parties, Yamina, they got seven, and the conservative Yisrael Betanyu got eight. The various Arab parties together got 13. Labor and the Liberal parties got 11, and the ultra-conservative religious parties got 17. So, here are the possible coalition combinations. If they're true, there will not be a winner. Bibi Netanyahu with Likud, plus all of his coalition partners, they think they can get to 55 seats, or six short. Remember, they must be at 61. Blue and white will get to 52 if they get the liberals. And there's one other group, which is a center to right wing party led by former defense minister Lieberman. He leads a party called Yisrael Betanyu. And he, if he comes in, will get them to 60 seats. Still one short. The Arab parties, if they joined in with either side, would put the winner over the top. But no Arab party since the founding of Israel in 1948 has ever joined a coalition. Why? Because they don't think Israel should exist. So they do not do not join the government. Even though they sit in government positions, including the Supreme Court, running hospitals, police, and some even fight in the army. However, they are not Zionists. So presently, Bibi, is the longest serving prime minister in Israel's history. He wants to keep the job. How is it possible? And what's the possible plan? Well, here's what he said the other day. Quote, Benny, this is to Benny Gantz, we must set up a broad unity government as soon as today. Unquote. And he went on, 
quote, the nation expects us, both of us, to demonstrate responsibility and that we pursue cooperation. Gantz responded. Without mentioning Netanyahu, he said, I will lead a liberal coalition without Netanyahu's orthodox allies and his second in command, Moshe Yalon, who used to be Israeli defense minister, said, the party will not enter a coalition led by Netanyahu. That has been blue and white's campaign promise throughout the campaign over the past months. They would not enter a unity government if Likud keeps Netanyahu as their leader. If he steps down, they'll invite Likud into a partnership government. So, there are no signs Likud will kick out Netanyahu, and all the Likud members in the last couple days signed pledges to support him. So, all the right-wing and religious parties have pledged loyalty to Netanyahu, and they signed a document recommending Netanyahu as the next prime minister and to tell the president that they plan to enter a coalition government as one unit. So, I just mentioned the president of Israel. Why is that important? Reuven Rivlin is the president of Israel. His main job in life, besides being a figurehead at, you know, ribbon cuttings and greeting other presidents, is to help run the elections after the first round is over. He, his main job in life, is to pick the candidate that he believes is the best likely to form a coalition of 60 plus one or more to control the Knesset and then have their leader become the prime minister. He starts the consultations this coming Sunday. Once he picks somebody, that person, the leader of the party, becomes the prime minister designate. And he has, get this, six weeks to go out and make a coalition and present the coalition to the president. If at the end of six weeks, he cannot come back to the president and say, I've got 61 or 62 or 64 or whatever, or before that he says, I give up, then Rivlin can go to the second guy and say, okay, he couldn't do it, now you do it. And you get 28 days to form a coalition. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna have a repeat of April. And in April, BB was picked to form a coalition, couldn't get to it, went back to Rivlin and said, I give up, order new elections. This would be a new election called by Rivlin. Rivlin says he will do everything in Israeli power to prevent another election. So here's the bottom line. Bibi didn't lose, Gantz didn't win, and Gantz can't win unless something really weird happens. So let's go through it. Likud now has a rumored 55 Knesset members joining his coalition, supposedly. He has created a, poli a political scenario, he being Netanyahu, where he's the only possible prime minister because he's the only one that can get over 61 without the Arabs. The blue and white party can join him and he goes over. Or one of the liberal parties join him and he goes over. If not, there's no way blue and white can make it, even with Lieberman joining them without the Arabs participating, which, according to all sources, will not happen. So in other words, it's either going to be Netanyahu as prime minister again, or more elections again. And for Israelis, that would be a disaster. One more thought for you. I want to point this out. The Arab parties cannot come into a coalition. Why? Well, they're not Zionists. They don't believe that Israel should exist as a Jewish state. They, and I'm talking about the members of Knesset within the Arab various parties, routinely meet with terrorists, routinely praise terrorists on their Facebook pages, and routinely speak out against the government of Israel for being pro-Jewish. There's no chance that either Blue and White or Likud offers a position in the government to them. Just in case you were wondering why, they run for office, but yet won't participate in the government. Are you confused yet? <laughs> so are the Israelis, and this is why it's a nervous breakdown period that is going to stretch from now, probably 
all the way into November. Oh my gosh, can you imagine going to bed when we had the American elections, wondering who the president is, and unlike waking up in the morning and finding out it's, well, Trump and not Clinton, you woke up in the morning and then the news told you, okay, we'll let you know in a couple of months. Wow, would Americans put up with that? Probably not. It's the unfortunate situation when you go with parliamentary instead of direct elections like the United States has. We are fortunate. The Israelis are, well, confused, frustrated, and are now going to have to wait for a couple of months or so at the outside to find out who their new leader is going to be. I hope this helps. In the meantime, remember, please text the word TRUTH to 88202 to get on our mailing list or go to atp.org um, and you, americantruthproject.org, can sign up to be on our mailing list. The easiest way to do it, findberry.com. That will take you right to us. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum.